After I made the videos about the stress distribution in glass that has not been annealed, many people asked me how I built the polariscope that I used for these videos. So I thought I would make a short video to explain the setup. It is very basic and it can be replicated by anybody. There are only two components to this. The first component is a polarized light source. This light source produces light that is linear polarized in one plane. The easiest way to obtain this kind of light source would be an LCD monitor. If you display a white picture on your LCD monitor, you got a polarized light source. The second component would be a separate polarizing filter. I bought a sheet of polarization foil on Amazon for around 20 bucks and I mounted it to a piece of cardboard to give it some rigidity. You could also use a linear polarizer for cameras. If I now place the polarizer in front of the LCD monitor, you can see that the brightness changes depending on the relative angle between the polarizer and the light source. If the polarizer has a 90 degree angle relative to the light source, no light is getting through and you should see a black image on the polarizing foil. The reason for that is that if the light of the LCD screen is, for example, polarized in the vertical plane, it can't get through the filter that leaves only light through that has been polarized horizontally. Glass and other materials have the property that they get optically active if stress is present. That means that they polarize the light. If I hold a annealed glass tube between both polarizing filters, the glass looks dark because it does not polarize the light in its annealed state. If I however apply a force on both ends of the tube, you can see that it gets brighter because I induce stress in the glass. Because of that stress, the glass gets optically active and polarizes the light so it can pass the second polarizing filter. I thought this is a cool analogy to how LCD screens work. LCD is short for liquid crystal display. Explained simple, an LCD has three main components. A polarized light source in the back and a polarizing filter 90 degrees to the first one in the front. In between these two filters, there's a layer of liquid crystals in each pixel. Without the liquid crystals, no light would get through the filter in the front because it's oriented 90 degrees to the light source. The screen would be black. But the crystals in between the two filters are optically active. That means that they can rotate the linear polarized light so it can pass through the filter in the front. These crystals are also dipoles. So if an electric field is applied, they orient themselves accordingly to this field. If they are oriented, they do not rotate the light in the way that it can pass the second filter and the screen is black. If you imagine the tube to be the liquid crystal, if you apply a force to the tube, it would be a bright pixel, and if you do not apply a force, it would be a dark pixel. Anyway, back to the main topic. Of course, you cannot only look at glass, other translucent materials show the same property, like plastic for example. Due to the effect of birefringence, you can see the stress as colored lines. Here you can see a triangular ruler. It is very interesting to see the stress concentration on the pointy edges and around the cutouts in the middle. And you can also see a point of high stress down here. As far as I know, this is caused by the injection molding process. At this location, the plastic was injected into the mold. This is a flexible triangular ruler. It shows no stress until I bend it. You can also look at this PVC tube. When I bend or stretch the tube, you can see the stress that is created. You can basically look at all the plastic you have in your house and see how the stress is distributed inside that object. I thought I would also show you the difference between glass that has not been annealed and glass that has been annealed. In the last video about the stress distribution in glass, I showed you my homemade still 
in its unannealed state. You could see the stress around the joints. The stress was created when the glass cooled down unevenly and too quickly after it was melted and formed. In this state it is not safe to use the still, because these areas are prone to cracking if they are heated, especially under vacuum. To reduce the stress, I annealed the glass in a kiln. In this kiln, the glass gets heated slowly to around 550 degrees C, was held there for around an hour, and after that it was cooled down slowly. During this process, the stress can dissipate. Depending on the glass and the thickness of the glass, the temperature profile can vary. After the glass was annealed, you can see that the stress in my still was almost completely gone. The same goes for the round bottom flask that I modified. Before annealing you can see the stress as white or bluish lines around the joints that I worked on. And after annealing you don't see any of these white or bluish lines anymore, so the stress is gone. I also wanted to talk about my Patreon. I got asked by people if there's a way to contact me or support my projects. Since I'm a very small YouTuber and I make these videos as a hobby, I never thought about creating a Patreon account. But now I have one. For now I will make all the posts public, so you do not need to support me on Patreon to participate. Please do not feel obliged to donate any money. The Patreon site is mainly to discuss certain ideas and hear your feedback. I would love to communicate with you and brainstorm certain ideas. And I have also created an email address where you can contact me. You will find it in the description. Other than that, thank you a lot for watching.